Submerged arc welding. Submerged arc welding, SAW, is a common arc welding process that involves the formation of an arc between a continuously fed electrode and the workpiece. A blanket of powdered flux generates a protective gas shield and a slag, and may also be used to add alloying elements to the weld pool, which protects the weld zone. A shielding gas is not required. The arc is submerged beneath the flux blanket and is not normally visible during welding. This is a well-established and extremely versatile method of welding. The electrode may be a solid or cord wire or a strip made from sheet or sintered material. The flux may be made by either fusing constituents to form a glassy slag or by agglomerating the constituents using a binder and a corning process. The chemical nature and size distribution of the flux assists arc stability and determines the mechanical properties of the weld metal and the shape of the bead. Welding current, arc voltage and travel speed all affect bead shape, depth of penetration and chemical composition of the deposited weld metal. Since the operator cannot observe the weld pool, great reliance must be placed on parameter setting and positioning of the filler wire. Although saw is normally operated with a single wire using either AC or DC current, there are a number of variants including the use of two or more wires. Additional productivity may be gained by feeding a small diameter non-conducting wire into leading edge of the weld pool. This can increase deposition rates by up to 20%. These variants are used in specific situations to improve productivity through increasing deposition rates and or travel speed. Replacing the wire with a 0.5mm thick strip, typically 60mm wide, enables the process to be used for surfacing components. Submerged arc welding is ideally suited to the longitudinal and circumferential butt welds required for the manufacture of line pipe and pressure vessels. Welding is normally carried out in the flat position because of the high fluidity of the weld pool and molten slag and the need to maintain a flux layer. The followings are the advantages of saw welding. It has a high deposition rate. The single pass can be made in thick plates using normal equipment. Ability to make the deep weld. Flux can be recovered, recycled, and reused. It produces welds with sound, uniform, corrosion-resistant, and good impart value. The arc is covered under a blanket of flux, which gave no chance for spatter. The process can be performed both indoors and outdoor. High-speed welding can be done on a thin sheet. Edge preparation is not necessary. Despite the good benefits submerged arc welding offers, some limitations also occur. The followings are the disadvantages of submerged arc welding. It is limited to some ferrous metals like steel and stainless steel. It is also limited to long straight seams or rotated pipes and vessel. Backing strips are required for proper penetration. It is limited to high thickness materials. TIG is a difficult process to master. It takes more knowledge, dexterity, time, and experience than other processes but pays off with better, more beautiful, and stronger welds. The main way TIG differs from other processes is its electrode. The electrode in the torch is a short tungsten rod, sharpened to a point. The difference is that the electrode isn't consumed. Instead, while working the torch with one hand, the operator feeds a long rod made of filler metal into the weld puddle. This metal rod is consumed by the weld puddle. The electrode only strikes and maintains the arc to melt the metal as a flame torch would. Favorable results depend greatly on the operator to handle the torch well, control the heat level and feed the filler rod at just the right speed. Like a MIG setup but with no wire feeding mechanism, the TIG torch connection carries pressurized inert gas to flood the arc region. The usual shielding gas for TIG welding is argon. MIG welding is a simple, popular form of welding. A novice can operate and master the art easily. MIG stands for metal inert gas and sometimes may be called gas metal arc welding, GMAW. 
It is a semi-automatic, quick process where filler wire is fed through the gun, and shielding gas is expelled around to protect from environmental impurities. The filler wire is fed on a spool to act as an electrode as well. The tip of the wire acts as an electrode to create the arc with base metal which melts as filler material to create the weld. The process is continuous and requires presetting of the parameters as per the welding need. The versatile process to weld an extensive list of metals which produces a clean, smooth, and visually appealing weld bead. These welding types are sensitive to external factors like rain, wind, and dust making them not great for outdoor use. The quality problem with MIG welding includes dross and porosity to make the structure weak. The commonest use of the MIG welding process is in automotive repair, construction, plumbing, robotics, and the maritime industry. The welding offered is sturdy, strong, and can withstand enormous force. Underwater welding, also known as hyperbaric welding, involves welding at elevated pressures. The welding can either take place in the water itself, wet welding, or in a dry, pressurized enclosure, dry welding, with steel being the most commonly welded material. The term, hyperbaric welding, is usually used when referring to dry welding and underwater welding for wet environments. Dry welds tend to be better quality than wet welds because of the greater control over the welding conditions and the ability to perform pre- and post-weld heat treatments. However, it can be difficult to determine the quality of underwater welds, as defects can be difficult to detect below the surface of the weld. How does underwater welding work? As mentioned above, there are two basic types of underwater welding, dry welding and wet welding. In dry welding, a hyperbaric chamber is sealed around the structure to be welded. The chamber is then filled with gas, typically a mixture of oxygen and helium, to expel the water and create a dry atmosphere for the weld to be performed. The chamber needs to be pressurized to the right level to prevent welders from suffering from decompression sickness while working. However, there are instances where welder divers don't have access to a hyperbaric chamber or when urgency means that a repair needs to be done immediately. Wet welding relies on the release of gaseous bubbles around an electric arc to shield the weld and prevent any electricity being conducted through the water. This insulating layer of bubbles protects the diver but also obscures the welding area, making it harder to complete the weld correctly. The bubbles can also disturb the welding pool and the welded joint may cool too quickly due to heat dissipating through the surrounding water. Underwater welding uses direct current settings rather than alternating current, as it is safer for the underwater welders to work with. Friction stir welding FSW, is a solid-state joining process that uses a non-consumable tool to join two facing workpieces without melting the workpiece material. Heat is generated by friction between the rotating tool and the workpiece material, which leads to a softened region near the FSW tool. It is primarily used on wrought or extruded aluminium and particularly for structures which need very high weld strength. FSW is capable of joining aluminium alloys, copper alloys, titanium alloys, mild steel, stainless steel, and magnesium alloys. More recently, it was successfully used in welding of polymers. Application of FSW can be found in modern shipbuilding, trains, and aerospace applications.